Hello, my name is Shannon Kringen. You're watching Goddess Kring, and I endorse Bernie Sanders. I officially fully endorse Bernie Sanders for the President of the United States of America. I am an artist and a model, and I am a pretty much a low-income person. And here's my some of my art that I put on my mobile phone. Here is a book that I self-published called Art, Identity, and the Sacred by Shannon Kringen. My art is my spiritual practice. I make a living as a full-time figure model for artists. My t-shirt that I'm wearing right now is Kring. I designed this myself. This is a pastel drawing of mine that's been printed onto a t-shirt. Just want to share a little bit of my art before I talk about why I endorse Bernie Sanders and why I'm not thrilled about Hillary Clinton and why I completely would never vote for any of the Republicans running right now. And I don't even want to talk about, I don't even want to mention the names of the Republican nominees running, but I will say that I love that Hillary Clinton is a female and that she's a strong person but she's not very progressive. She's okay with Monsanto. She's okay with getting paid a lot of money by corporations to do speeches and not really share with us what those are. They're just very private and secret. She thinks that minimum wage can't really be raised very much, maybe just a little. She thinks that's pie in the sky and too much to expect. Again, she's okay with GMO. She's okay with fracking. She's okay with Monsanto. She's basically okay with a lot of the corporate way that things are run. She thinks that single-payer health care is a little too much to expect. I think that, so the reason why I love Bernie Sanders, and not just him as a person speaking, but his ideas, his the movement, basically, is that he is, I also love the man Robert Reich, who, who, uh, made a film called Inequality for All, and he wrote a book called Saving Capitalism, which is that socialized democratic socialism, in other words, socialized democracy, democratic socialism, mixed with capitalism, meaning you can still have a business and make money and make a profit, but there are certain rules like you have to have unions. You have to pay your employees more. Like right now in the United States, we have sort of an unregulated capitalism, which means that you can pay the low-end workers like seven, eight, nine, ten bucks an hour, and then there's managers way up in the company that make like five thousand dollars an hour, which is ridiculous. Most other countries do not allow that they don't have extreme low wages at the bottom and extreme high wages at the top. It's more of a gradual climb for people that work for larger corporations. So I have friends in Norway and England and Scotland and Holland and France and Australia and I know Canadians. I mean online I have lots of international friends. Most of them have socialized health care. So what I was going to say was capitalism and health care should not be mixed. And so a lot of the things that Bernie Sanders says, are they, they ring true. It's like the public library, the fire department, the police department, things funded by taxes, mass transit. I mean, more money could be put into mass transit. Health care should be nonprofit. And the government should step in and regulate and not allow prices, you know, price gouging like in the United States, a bottle of medication could cost $500, and you could go to Canada or the UK or France or some other socialized European country and pay like $5 for the same medication that costs $500 or $1,500 in the United States. So capitalism mixed with socialized democracy or whatever you want to call it, democratic socialism, can help it be more ethical and wealthy people should pay higher taxes because they can afford it and so it seems like social programs are cut 
and then benefits for the wealthy are increased, which is the opposite. So, so much of what Bernie Sanders resonates with me, says resonates with me, and I'm so frustrated that the superdelegates, like here, I live in Seattle, Washington, USA, and apparently I caucused for Bernie, and apparently 72% of the people in Seattle voted for Bernie in the caucus, so he basically won. And yet I'm finding out that a lot of superdelegates in my state, Washington state, are voting for Hillary. And so I'm thinking, okay, this is ridiculous. I wish that we would abolish the whole superdelegate college electoral, what you call it, voting system, and we would have an actual real democracy, which would be one person, one vote. Whether you're a senator or a low-income person, one person, one vote. Therefore, every single person 18 and over that votes, their vote actually counts equally. Like to me, I think that me, I'm a 47-year-old low-income artist, my vote should have just as much power as a wealthy person that works in uh, Olympia, Washington in the Senate. That's our, in Washington State, Olympia is where the main uh, political stuff happens. What is it called? That's the capital of our state. So people that work in the government, the people that are super delegates that are senators or congresspeople or whatever their job title is that make a lot more money than I do and they actually work in the government. Their vote should be equal to my vote. In other words, I think it's really unfair and completely undemocratic that somebody can be a superdelegate and their vote counts for a lot more. I imagine that we started this in the 17 or 1800s when there was a lot of people who couldn't read or write or vote. But now in 2016, most people 18 and over, I hope, can read and write, therefore should be able to vote, therefore their vote should count one for one. So I think if you're like a senior citizen or an 18-year-old or me, a 47-year-old, somebody that makes minimum wage, somebody that's wealthy, somebody that's middle class, if you're a homemaker, if you're a mother that stays at home with her kids, all of us should get equal voting power because that's what democracy is, is when all of us are equal. Even though some people are rich, some people are poor, some people are middle class, we're all just human beings that have rights, the right to health care, you know, the, what does it say, the, the right of the pursuit of happiness, you know, the liberty and justice for all. I mean, come on. So the way our country works, the way the United States seems to work right now, is that the rich people get to boss around the poor and the middle class. And the middle class is actually disappearing because we're having, our wages are stagnating. Like I remember in 1994, I made 750 an hour. I worked at a Xerox place and I made 750 an hour, which was pretty crappy at the time, but I think that was minimum wage. So they started me at 750 an hour. And that was, 22 years ago and apparently there are some people who still make 750 an hour so in 1994 750 an hour was like this much and now 22 years later if you make 750 an hour it's like worth this much because of inflation i mean the cost of rent is skyrocketing especially in seattle we don't have any rent control and the wages are just like Actually, we just raised our minimum wage to $15 an hour here in Seattle, so we're lucky. I think that's the highest in the nation so far. But still, $15 an hour. I mean, I'm a figure model, and I've been making $15 an hour for years as a figure model. The problem is I don't get 40 hours a week. So figure models like me make between $15 and $25 an hour, and that's considered normal for a figure model but I only work three or four hours at a time and I have to book myself at like 20 different art schools in order to keep myself working full time. I have to constantly be looking for work. I've done this for over 20 years. I work at about 20 different places, literally. I work for medical schools, two different medical schools, probably about 10 or 15 different art schools, as well as private drawing and painting groups. So I'm constantly hustling for work and looking for more modeling gigs. And I have some people who hire me regularly, but I've been used to making 15 to $25 an hour for quite a while. So basically, I think <laughs> if, if you wanna take into consideration inflation, then people should probably make $25 an hour minimum. I mean, because rent is going up and wages are kind of stagnating. And if wages stay the same, 
but rent and the price of food goes up, then basically 15 bucks an hour, if, if, if minimum wage is $15 an hour and it stays $15 an hour for years and the price of everything else goes up, then $15 an hour means less and less and less and less. It has less power. The way I survive is I have an amazing landlord who intentionally charges under market rate, under market rate rent. In Seattle, there are people who have that pay thirteen hundred a month for two hundred square feet, which is a tiny box. I have about six hundred square feet, one bedroom apartment. I only pay eight fifty, which to me that's that's plenty enough for me because my I'm kind of a low income person. So to me, I pay over half my income for my rent basically because I'm low income, but I'm really good with my money. I'm very careful. I spend as little as possible. I only drink water. I shop at Costco and Trader Joe's. I get the best deal. I go. I shop at thrift stores. I mean, I get like new socks and shoes and underwear, but mostly I get used clothing that's perfectly good at thrift stores because it's like you know six dollars for a pair of pants versus forty dollars and up for a pair of pants or whatever. And I go to food banks and. I'm a health food person, so a lot of food I can't even eat that's at the food bank. But anything healthy that I can eat because uh, I don't eat any bread or grain. Anything healthy that I can actually eat, I get at the food bank. And then I give the rest to my mom because my mom is a low-income artist who is needs some help right now. So basically, my mother is a low-income senior and her Social Security, um, her, her basically her Medicare or Medicaid is worse than mine. I get free Obamacare because I'm low-income. And ironically, I get better health care than my mom does. And my mom needs it more than me. My mom is like in her 60s. And I'm sad that her health care costs her more money than you would think for a low-income senior. You know, so this country needs to change. The United States of America, I mean, most other countries, go see the Michael Moore film called Where to Invade Next. You know, he goes to Portugal where drugs are legal and they, and ironically, drug abuse has gone down since they decriminalized uh, drugs. And they have, because therefore, if you're addicted to drugs and you want treatment, you can seek it and not, and not be worried about getting in trouble legally for being a criminal. Just because you're a drug addict doesn't mean you're a criminal. So, okay. so I mean, I would be in favor of legalizing drugs. Not that drugs are a good thing. I don't even smoke marijuana, but I don't even like to drink alcohol. But I think drugs should be legal because it's not a criminal I wish to decriminalize drugs. Let's just say it's not an encouraging thing to do to do drugs, but uh, to decriminalize it would help um, increase the possibility that people could get help with their addiction if they want it. And if they want to take drugs, that's their choice. But I don't think it should be a criminal offense to do drugs. But I don't personally like drugs for my life. But I don't think there should be a bunch of people in prison for doing drugs. That's ridiculous. It's a waste of money. And it's cruel and abusive. And I'm against the death penalty. I'm pro-choice. I'm against the death penalty. I'm for free college, free socialized public university, just like we have public high school and public grade school in the United States of America. We could have public college. They do in many other countries. Um, and if we didn't spend so much on the military, if we taxed the rich and we didn't spend so much on the military in the United States of America, that would free up a lot of money. And if our health care was socialized and nonprofit and we got rid of all the for-profit insurance health insurance companies for profit if we got rid of that and we could put those people that get laid off in that industry to work doing other things that are actually helpful for society like we could have high-speed trains we can increase mass transit we can increase solar panels electric cars we can make universities public and free or low cost or sliding scale in some way we could have nonprofit health care that's socialized. So whether you're rich or poor or middle class, you can go to the doctor and not worry about a medical bill. My friend in England, he has health care, socialized national health care in England, and a small percentage of his paycheck is deducted and that pays for his health care. But the company he works for has nothing to do with his health care, which is nice. See, in England, companies don't have to provide their workers with health care. So therefore, the company is... Um, they can spend all of their time and energy running their company and not worrying about covering people with health care. See, that's why I think health care and employment should be completely separate. So 
Uh, that's the way it is in a lot of countries. You know, I've traveled to Europe many times. I have, again, people, a friend in the UK, or well, two friends in the UK, a friend in Scotland, a friend in France, a friend in Holland, a friend in Australia, a friend in Canada, uh, in, you know, in Norway, and all of them have health care, and they're all, their systems are all a little bit different. Uh, some people do pay a small monthly fee. Some people seem to pay nothing at all, So, and they don't get a medical bill. So it's very different. I do think it's possible. I think, um, I, but I'm again, I'm mad that the superdelegates are voting for whatever they want, whether the general public agrees or not, they're just going to vote for whoever they want to vote for. So I really think we should have one person, one vote and get rid of the college electoral thing and get rid of the whole superdelegate thing. Even delegates is odd. I volunteered. I caucused for Bernie, voted for Bernie, 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 Bernie all the way, Bernie Sanders all the way. Not a huge fan of Hillary once again because she seems to she overcome in my opinion she overcompromises she goes along with the money people like I don't like fracking I don't want fracking I don't want GMO I don't want Monsanto I want more solar power electric cars a woman's right to choose reproductive rights have nothing to do that shouldn't be part of politics it's a personal choice healthcare should be nonprofit you know. I want a progressive person in the White House, and, and I'm voting for Bernie all the way, and I don't know if it's even possible that he can get in because we don't have a real democracy. The people that are saying, the mainstream media is even saying, Bernie's doing great. He's winning a whole bunch of states, but he can't win. And I wonder if they're saying that because they want to scare us into thinking we have to do the lesser of two evils, which would be Hillary. I'm sure that Hillary herself is a good human being, a woman who's strong and tries to do what she believes in, but the reality is she gets paid lots of money by large corporations and therefore she's swayed in a certain way. Plus she's extremely wealthy herself and has been so for many, many years. I know she's traveled all over the world and met all the leaders of many different countries. She's voted for a lot of wars. She's just done a lot of things that really upset me that I'm that are not very progressive in my opinion. And I agree with what Susan Sarandon said that just if if Bernie loses, she's not just going to automatically vote for Hillary. Like a lot of people say, well, of course I'd vote for Hillary if Bernie loses. The thing is, some people misconstrued what she said and thought that she meant she was just, she was going to vote for Trump just because she said, I'll have to think about it if Bernie loses. If I would vote for Hillary, I'm not sure what I would do. She didn't say she would vote for Trump. She just said, and some people think that Trump will bring the revolution right away. But I think what she meant was not a good revolution. Imagine if Trump got in. That would be ridiculous. People would be rioting in the streets. I mean, it might get real violent. Some people apparently like what he says. I personally am offended by almost everything I've ever heard him say. So, you know, he is he is for... Um, the rich people getting richer, the poor people, you know, he's, he's basically for all the things that I'm against. I just, whatever. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to get into detail about why I don't like Mr. Orange face with the big floppy hair. I think he belongs in Las Vegas on stage. I think that Mr. Trump belongs in Las Vegas on stage doing a comedy routine. I mean, I think the stuff that he says is so ridiculous over the top. It's also hateful and mean. So it's a very, very dark humor. I think he belongs on stage doing dark comedy routines. I mean, it's ridiculous. So never mind. I don't want to talk about him. Let's just say I'm a big fan of Bernie. And I like that Susan Sarandon had the guts to speak out and say, hey, you know what? We want Bernie. We don't really want the same old, same old. And the whole lesser of two evils thing, like voting for Hillary, supposedly the lesser of two evils. It's true that what she says sounds better to me than what the Republicans say, but if you follow the money trail of, of what she does, and plus she voted for the Iraq war, I thought the Iraq war was wrong. So I don't, I, I just, I don't admire that about her. I don't admire, she said things about the Israeli-Palestine thing that upset me because I am for humanitarian aid being sent to help those suffering on either side. And I don't, I don't uh, think that you should defend violence on either side and and never mind i don't want to say too much about this because people get really mad at me when i talk about israel palestine i'm kind of afraid to say much of anything let's just say that i don't like hypocrisy and i don't like it when 
somebody is violent towards somebody else and then says, well, it's their fault. You know, they're the bad guy. Therefore, I'm going to be really violent towards this other side because they're, it's their fault anyway. So I don't like it when people are hypocrites and they don't take responsibility and they think their own shit doesn't stink. So everybody's shit stinks no matter who they are or where they're from. So I feel like each person and each culture is responsible and we can all be the change that we want to see. So therefore, the people that I admire are the ones like Martin Luther King, the ones who are for nonviolence, the ones who are for trying to build up what we want instead of fighting against what we hate or what we're afraid of. And that's what I was going to say too is racism. I think that if you think about what is racism, racism is fear, which is lack of love. So if somebody is racist towards somebody else or prejudiced in any way towards a man or a woman or a transgender, it's all based on fear. And I also think that rich people that hoard their money are really just afraid of scarcity. So a rich person might look like they're confident and they're very proud of their wealth and they want to flaunt it everywhere. But I think if you really examine what's going on, there's a fear of scarcity and this need to show off and go, look at me, I have a yacht. Look at me. Does anybody really need a yacht? Probably not. <sighs> So I think that a lot of it comes down to is fear and what fear is is lack of love. So what the world needs is more love and what the world needs is a more socialized democracy in the United States. So capitalism and socialized democracy can work together. In fact, socialized extreme capitalism with not enough socialized democracy is bad because it, it makes everything really competitive and poverty is skyrocketing in the United States. We have more and more homeless people. It's very sad to see that. We've got food stamps being cut. We've got basically, you know, wages are stagnating. So with a socialized democracy, people's wages would go up. Capitalism People could still be entrepreneurs and have businesses and make money and, and, and enjoy capitalism and making a profit, but they would have to pay their fair share of taxes and they would have to have unions and pay their workers a higher wage. Uh, the Michael Moore film, Where to Invade Next, at one point he goes to Italy and he talks to a CEO at a motorcycle factory and of, okay, but two, he went to two different companies. One is a motorcycle factory, he talked to the CEO. And the other one was a fashion design type of a place where people were making really fancy, beautiful Italian clothing. And both of these companies have very different rules than America. In the United States, people don't necessarily get paid a very good wage, and yet their CEOs or bosses get paid like $5,000 an hour or $500,000 a year or something outrageous. And then they might get paid like 10 bucks an hour or something like that, working really hard and getting short breaks and not getting any paid time off. Whereas in Italy, the CEOs don't make as much. Basically, they pay their workers a lot more than, I don't know what the minimum wage is in Italy, but in these factories, they pay their workers a good fair wage to the point where they don't need an extra job to make enough money to be comfortable. They give them two hour lunch breaks time enough to go home and have lunch with their family. So a lot of other countries do things like this, like the wages are higher on the low end and lower on the high end. So basically there's more wage equality. There's more like a ladder, like when you started a company, you get like an okay wage and then you can keep getting higher and higher and higher. And then your, your CEO or boss of your company doesn't make 5,000% more than you. Maybe they only make three or 400% more than you you know, which is probably enough. And Michael Moore asked these people, well, wouldn't you like to be even richer and more wealthy? And, you, you know, if you paid your people less, you could have more money for yourselves. And they're like, well, what's the point? We wouldn't be any happier. We don't need to get richer. We are happier when we know our employees are happy and we pay them a good wage. So basically in other countries, there's more of an attitude of bosses like to pay their employees a higher wage because the employees are better workers. If you pay somebody fairly and a decent wage and you give them a good lunch break and paid time off and paid vacation and maternity leave and paid sick leave, they're going to be happier and more loyal to the company. And they're, and they're quite frankly, if you pay, if a manager pays their employees well and gives them paid vacation time, they're probably not going to steal from that company. I feel like if you pay somebody crappy wages and you treat them like a slave, they're probably going to be really pissed off. Like, okay, I'm glad I have a job, but my wages are low. And they might be more likely to steal from that company or sneak or cheat or lie 
or you know take advantage of the company they work for in some sneaky kind of way if you pay them well they're more likely to say oh I love the company where I work I'm so happy that I work here and I get paid well and I get vacation time so I can rest when I'm not working and then I come to work fully energized and ready to work hard for my company you see it's so much more positive when you pay somebody a fair wage and give them fair uh, break times and vacation times etc I'm really happy that I am a a freelance model because I have a flexible like I get to say yes or no to what jobs I mean it's stressful because I'm constantly feeling like I, I should say yes to everything because my schedule is like up and down like a roller coaster but the nice thing is I've been able to go to Europe like six or seven times and I don't have a lot of money so when I say I go to Europe <laughs> A lot of people think you have to have a lot of money to travel. Well, not me, because I don't have a lot of money. And what I do is I stay with friends. So I find, and I belong to couchsurfing.com. So I stay with friends and strangers who are uh, verified and safe to stay with. And I stay on their couch, literally, for free. So basically, I have free accommodation. So I don't have to pay for a hotel or a youth hostel. I have friends that I can stay with and couchsurfing.com acquaintances that I can stay with. And I've done this a few times and it's all worked out really well. And then basically I just drink water for free and I, and I eat out of grocery stores and I cook at home with the people that I stay with or I just eat really cheap out, out on the road somewhere. Um, and I, I basically just walk around and take photos and I don't spend money. I don't buy anything. I've taken a couple bus tours that were inexpensive, like, you know, $20 or whatever. But I basically spend hardly any money. I mean, I travel in a very rough way. Like, it's not really very comfortable, but I travel really cheap. Like, I hardly spend anything, um, which actually is a little stressful. But I have been able to go to Europe several times doing this. So there are ways to travel, and it doesn't cost tons of money, believe me. If you find somebody to stay with, and you go to grocery stores and buy food, and then you cook it at home, it's a lot cheaper than if you stay in a hotel and you eat out all the time and you buy touristy type things. I never buy it. I just walk around and take photos with my camera. So I don't need to spend any money on any things that I buy. Um, I don't even buy postcards really, but I used to, but not anymore. So there it is. Okay. So socialized democracy. That's what I want. So I endorse Bernie Sanders. Goddess Crane endorses Bernie Sanders. I'll do another video later. Thank you for listening. Feel free to share questions and comments. ShannonKringen.com is my website. I'm an artist and a model and a survivor of a challenging childhood, uh, but both my parents are wonderful people in some ways, and everything that happened to me, good and bad, has taught me and brought me to where I am now, and my love life is going well, and it's amazing, and uh, it's amazing. So thank you so much for listening. ShannonKringen.com. Go look at my art. Thank you. Feel free to write me with questions or comments.